I'm in Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operation and I'm using the July 2017 release. Now, this feature has been in the product for a few releases, but if I go into Master Planning, um, what I have is the ability to set up demand forecasting and the demand forecasting that's in the product, if I want to use statistical forecasting, is based on Azure Machine Learning. So you'll see if I click on the Azure Machine Learning parameters, I need to set up some parameters and you'll see the first time I click on it, I'll get a message here and if you have a look at the message details, this will actually give you the instructions of what you need to actually go and set up. So let's have a walkthrough of configuring this um, so that we understand how we can actually get the basic mechanism working. Then we can do some follow-up videos on the overall business process. So you'll see that the first thing that you want to have a look at is the URL that's provided here. So if you copy the URL, it's going to send you across to the uh, Dynamics Demand Forecasting Experiment. Now, you want to open this up um, and you might want to sign up to the studio.azureml.net and log in there first. You'll get an option to use a free um, usage of the machine learning, which is fine for demonstration purposes. If you want to use it in production, you, um, you're probably best to pay the paid subscription for performance. So what you want to do is click on the link here. This is going to take you across and log you in. So you'll see that you'll get the options for quick evaluation, um, obviously a free workspace and then the enterprise grade. In my case, um, I've got an account already, so I'm just going to sign in here. All right, so it's going to ask me to copy from the gallery into the region um, and into my workspace. I've already created my workspace, so I'm going to um, hit OK here. Now I've already configured this in some other environments, and so you'll see those there. Now we'll have a look at the configuration of this in a another video in terms of how this works but in terms of getting the setup working um, this is what we need to do so you need to hit run and so run's going to go and validate the experiment here so it might take a little while to run so you'll see um, it hasn't run yet and it's running and it'll start to check the setup here so um, you'll see that it says finish running so that looks okay so then what we're going to do is that we need to deploy the web service so I'm going to click on this and deploy the web service so I'll just pause the video while it deploys alright so it shouldn't take too long to deploy and then what we get given here is the API key so I want to copy this um, and I want to copy this and put this back in the parameters. So this is the first parameter, which is the web service API key. So I'm going to paste that into the parameters um, here. Now, the next parameter is um, back on our web service, which is the request response. So I'm going to go and click on the request response here and what I need to do is this is my parameter and I want to copy it all the way up to the end but not the execute like the forward slash execute API so I'm going to copy this part of the URL to this GUID here so I'm going to take that back and then put that into my web service endpoint so that's the next parameter so once I've done that I can simply hit save and I can close out my message details and then that's my setup. Now there's other parameters but we'll have a look at those in follow-up videos. So once we've actually done that you'll see um, that's all we needed to do is specify these two um, key parameters here. So once we've configured that the first thing that we'll probably do is generate now you'll see in the demo data it says um, authorize adjusted demand forecast so if you look in the demo data then you'll actually have um, forecast details in there so let me close out this message um, 
and so if you look at that data you'll have them there but let's go and run the forecast uh, again and so we can see what we have so the first thing you want to do is generate the statistical baseline forecast. Now, based on the data that's in the application, I'm going to go from the 1st, 2013, and I'm going to do it from the 6th, 30th, 2017. So what I want from in the from date is where the forecast is that I'm going to put in the system. So I'm going to say from the 1st of July. Now you'll see there's other parameters in terms of filters uh, the forecast horizon. So what I'm going to say here is that I want it to use this history and then forecast out the next three months from this date. Um, so that's what the experiment is going to do and what we're doing here is um, interfacing to that experiment in the Azure ML. So I'm going to hit OK. Now this forecast baseline is going to run and in the demo data and based on the free Azure ML it's probably going to take about six to maybe eight minutes to actually run so I'm going to pause the video while it runs and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the output all right so the generations run so I can come into master planning and have a look at the adjusted demand forecast so if we go in there, let's pick on a specific product, for example, which is the uh, this one, D004. And so we'll have the three months that we set up in the run. So obviously if I did six months, we'd see six months of figures or, or what have you in terms of the prediction forward. So this is where the statistical uh, forecast has been generated, but now we might need to adjust it based on our knowledge, for example. So let's say, um, I don't think we're going to sell as much in July, but in August um, we're going to sell a little bit more and then a little bit more in um, September because we're going to run a promotion and um, there was no way I could have indicated that promotion to um, the system when I ran it, for example. Now, there are ways to provide inputs, and that's something we can do as uh, follow-ups. But in this particular case, um, if the model didn't have knowledge of events that we knew about, this is where I'd adjust the forecast here. All right, so when we're ready, we can simply hit Authorize Adjusted Demand Forecast. This is going to have the parameters. Now, in this case, I don't want to update this company, so I'm going to remove that one. I don't want to update the USRT company, so I'm going to remove that one. Um, but otherwise, the details will be taken from where we ran them. So I'm going to say OK here, and then it's going to tell me we're going to overwrite, so I'm going to let it overwrite. So this will take a few seconds, so I'm just going to pause the video. All right, that's been updated now. I'm going to open up another uh, tab here. So let's go across to our release products. So I'm going to go over to my release products, which is my product information management, and then my release products. So if we look for our item that we adjusted, D1234, this is our item. So if I have a look at the plan and then the demand forecast for that item, then what I'll see, so this is the 7th, so that's when I had my forecast in there, for example. You'll see that we have our 200 in here. Now you'll see that I've got two lines um, for this item, so 7171 and in this particular case this item is tracked by configuration so if you have a look at the dimensions configuration is 05 site 113 and then if we have a look at the other one um, inventory dimensions is default configuration site 113 so when we adjusted the forecast we did it based on the configuration which is default so you'll see for example this is what we adjusted default as 200 and this is where the 148 comes in so that's something to keep in mind in terms of the inventory dimensions that you are tracking these items on
So as well, if you have a look at the other dates, uh, for example, so we said 8th, um, our adjusted forecast was 300, so this will be the 8th of the 1st. Um, if we have a look at the details, then we'll have our 300. So that's essentially the really quick walkthrough of the uh, statistical demand forecasting setup and really the key here is the Azure Machine Learning if we want to generate the forecast. So um, we need to configure the Azure Machine Learning to uh, allow that generation of statistical baseline forecast to happen. Um, so that's what we wanted to sort of cover in 